Welcome to Right On with John Crane. Thanks for joining me. I hope you guys are doing great. And in today's build, I'm going to make a Morse taper drill bit rack. I think there's nothing better than having tools in the shop that are neatly organized and easy to find. And in the case of these Morse taper drill bits that I have here, I've been storing them in this old card catalog here behind me in these drawers, you know, the old Dewey decimal system there. And that's been great, but it's time for an upgrade. So I came up with this plan to build a Morse taper drill bit rack out of some inch and a half uh, steel tubing here. And uh, this rack is going to go on the back wall of my shop behind the Bridgeport Mill and above the bench there. And I just want to have the drill bits easily displayed and easily accessible. Uh, so last night, I did some uh, test holes on this on the Bridgeport Mill. And uh, in making this, you know, all these Morse taper drill bits have a taper to them, right? So in drilling the holes in this inch and a half steel tubing, the hole on the top is larger than it is on the bottom. So that's how we're going to execute this plan here. And if you guys want to follow along and if this plan works for you and it works for your shop, I'm gonna have these plans up on my website, right on with johncrane.com. You can go there and get these for free, print them out, that type of thing. I'm also gonna have the drawings in this video so you can take a look of uh, what drill bit sizes I use to make these holes and uh, the layout here on this steel. So, all right, there's lots of work to do, so let's dive in. This is where I'm going to install these drill bit racks is along this back wall above the bench here and behind the bridge port. And that inch and a half square tubing is going to attach to a piece of plywood I'm gonna put on the wall here. And then I'll just be able to drop these drill bits in. They'll be neatly organized and easily accessible. Here is a drawing so that everyone can follow along. Now what I have cut is a piece of half inch plywood and I cut it 95 inches long by 24 inches tall and I've painted that white. And then what I'm going to do is attach this inch and a half square tubing to that at 20 inches down. And this just happens to work for the dimensions above my bench there. I also have shown the dimension here but not drawn is the piece that will go behind the bridge port. I'm gonna cut that at 70 inches and uh, have that at 24 inches and do the same thing, attach the inch and a half square tubing to that. These are the samples that I drilled last night in this inch and a half square tubing. So here is the number one Morse taper drill bit here. And I got those spaced an inch and a quarter apart. Here's the number two. I got that spaced an inch and a half apart. Uh, here's the number three Morse taper, these three guys right here. I spaced these two inches apart. And here's the number four Morse taper. And I have these guys spaced uh, two and a half inches apart. And you can see here on all these, the hole on the top is larger than the hole on the bottom, right? Because of the taper here on the Morse taper. And these can just drop right in there. And uh, all these seem to fit very, very nicely there. Here's the drawing for the uh, holes for the number one Morse taper here. And remember, this works on inch and a half square tubing. This is 1 16th inch wall. Uh, you could probably do it with thicker wall as well, but this seems to work out well. So for the top hole, I'm gonna have a 29 64 so I got the bit laid out here. And for the bottom hole, I'm gonna use a 3 8 bit, running those at 1000 RPM on the bridge port there. And these will be spaced an inch and a quarter apart. For the number two Morse taper bits, I'm going with an 11 16th inch hole on the top and a 5 8 inch hole on the bottom. And here I'm switching to an annular cutter there. These are just, these are great. I don't have them in every size, but when I do have it available, I'm gonna use it to cut these holes here. And these are going to be spaced out an inch and a half on center there. For the number three Morse taper, I got a 15 16th annular cutter here and a 55 64 for the bottom hole. And these are spaced two inches apart. For the number four Morse taper, I got a one and three sixteenths inch hole at the top and an inch and an eighth hole at the bottom. And these are spaced two and a half inches apart. 
I've got my parts cut and deburred here, and now I'm going to do a little layout. And even though I'm using the DRO on the Bridgeport Mill over there, I like to see a physical drawing layout on the piece uh, just to reassure that I'm not screwing up on the DRO, you know. Uh, so I'm just going to come in with a little sharpen right here. All right, for each Morse taper bit, I'm going to have 20 spots. So for the number one Morse taper, I'm going to have 20 number one Morse taper spots here that I'm going to drill and so on and so forth. So for the number two Morse taper, I'll make 20 spaces here. So for the number one here, these are spaced an inch and a quarter apart. So I'm going to start laying down that spacing right here. All right, over here at the Bridgeport Mill, the setup that I got going on here is that I've got two vices now set up on the table here. And what this is going to enable me to do is to uh, put this piece of inch and a half tubing on here, and then I'm going to be able to come through and just drill these holes right in a straight line, just keep moving the table over. Of course, I'm going to be using the DRO there to accurately space these holes. But what the plan is first here is I'm going to drill each hole here. I'm going to pile it through with an eighth inch drill bit through the top and the bottom. And that's because, right, we have larger holes in the top here, you know, for this Morse taper, and we got smaller holes on the bottom. So pile it through with the eighth inch drill bit first, then come back. I'll drill all the holes in the top here to the right size, flip this over, and then drill all the holes on the bottom of this to the right size. So uh, it's a little bit of a process, but I think it's gonna work out really slick here on the bridge part. A quick tip here, if you are drilling a lot of these holes at once, is that you can quickly count the revolutions on here and match up with your DRO there. So here I'm doing holes that are spaced two inches apart, and we have 200 thousandths per every crank of the dial here. So a quick way to do this is just to go 10 rotations real quick, and it gets you right at two inches in the jiffy there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight, nine, 10, and we'll bring it right back into zero. And I look at the DRO there, right? And we're right on the money there. All right, I'm starting out here with the holes for the number four Morse taper. So I'm gonna start with the one and three sixteenths annular cutter there. And again, these holes are two and a half inches on center there. So I'm gonna drill all of these guys. And I have the bridge part here set to 340 RPM. Now I'm starting the holes here for the number one Morse taper bits there. And so I'm coming in with the 29 64th bit there. And I'm actually using a Morse taper bit here. And uh, I have an adapter here. This is a Morse taper to R8 there for the bridge port. And if you don't have an adapter like that, it's a great thing to have for the bridge port.
Now I'm drilling some quarter inch holes right through the sidewall here, and this will enable me to attach it to the half inch plywood. All right, here's the plywood that I'm going to mount the drill bit rack to. And this is half inch plywood. And I cut an inch and a half strip here that's gonna be like a furring strip to hold the drill bit rack out a little bit from the wall. In case I have a bit that's uh, larger than an inch and a half, I can put that on there and I'll have a little bit of room behind the rack. So I'm gonna attach this here with some staples. chicken chow mein. All right, now I'm gonna attach this steel to the board here. And I got some uh, lag bolts here. These are kind of a washer head lag bolt. All right, let's see how this goes. Doing the one man show here. All right, I am just so stoked at how this turned out. I've been wanting to do this build here for a while and to have this complete uh, just really makes me happy here. And uh, sometimes there's just nothing better than just organizing your shop. To be able to come into the shop and just work with ease and to be able to find a tool and not spend half the day looking for it around the shop is just a real treat. I just uh, love having things organized and this rack, uh, I just think turned out tremendous and works uh, really well. So like I was saying, I'm gonna put these uh, drawings up on my website, right on with johncrane.com. And uh, you know, there's also some still shots of the drawings in this video here, if you guys would like to build this at home in your own shop there. And, uh, and I also wanna say, check out my website. I do have a list of tools there that I have in my tool bag. And uh, if you do purchase a tool through my website there, it just brings you over to Amazon and then I get a few cents or something if you buy a tool there. But it is pretty cool to have that tool list there if you're trying to build a tool bag, uh, put some tools together, that type of thing. So uh, right on with johncrane.com. So anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I love doing this build here and I will see all you guys soon. All right, right on. <laughs>